is uh, there's a theory called eternal inflation, which is a theory that, and it's actually the most popular theory, I think, at the moment for what happened, for why the Big Bang is the way that it is. Because it's got some very special features, the Big Bang, which we could talk about. But inflation is the idea that space, space time was around before the Big Bang and it was expanding extremely fast. And it was doubling in size in the most popular of these theories every 10 to the minus 37 seconds, which is point naught, 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 with 37 noughts, one of a second. So it's an unimaginably fast expansion. And then the idea is that draws to a close, so it quite naturally sort of dies away and the expansion slows down. And all the energy that was taken, that was causing that expansion, sort of gets dumped into space and heats it up and makes particles, and that's what we call the Big Bang. And those theories, the slight extension to those, um, say that, that that slowing down just happens in little patches. So most of the universe, the overwhelming majority of the universe, is still inflating at that insane uh, sort of speed. And the just little patches stop, and they're big bangs. So you get multiple universes, a multiverse. It's called the inflationary multiverse. And we are in one of those bubbles. And that's one of the more popular theories. That's another one. I mean, that right now, I'm aware of what you're saying. I, I, I can I can sort of visualize it in some sort of a graphic form, but it's incomprehensible. Like my, yeah. my mind doesn't it doesn't have the capacity to expand the this a sense of distance and size to that that grasp. Is this because of just the way we evolved? We evolved here on Earth to deal with the space that's in front of us, and now over the course of you know in industrial civilization and education, we're now grasping these concepts that are so alien to the reality, the the tangible reality that we exist in every day. I'm sure that's right. Um, the the you know, even very simple things, like you go back to the Greeks, so Aristotle and the great, you know, very clever people, but they thought the Earth was at the centre of the universe. Uh, why? Because it feels like it's at the centre right. of the universe. It feels like we're not moving. Um, and that's quite a deep point, actually, in physics. It's like, why is it that we're flying around relative to the sun very fast at whatever speed it is, 18 miles a second or something like that, and the whole solar system is going around the Milky Way galaxy and so on. But why is it that we don't feel it? And um, the Greeks quite naturally said, well, because we're at the center of the universe. They also said everything falls towards the Earth. So therefore, the Earth must be at the center. It's, it's natural. Right. And, and actually, it's quite a deep uh, thought to, to understand why it doesn't feel that we're moving. It, uh, you have to go all the way to Einstein, really, for someone to take that very seriously. And he, what he said, actually, he said, well, this, um, th there's a great little explanation in Stephen Hawking's Brief History of Time about this. That the idea that you can't tell whether you're moving or not demolishes the notion of absolute space. So if we think about space, if I said space to you or most people, I suppose, you'd think it the way that Newton did of a big box within which things happen. And that's got to be, the, that's a natural picture of space and the universe, isn't it? It's a, a thing in which all the planets and galaxies are placed. But um, in, in the brief history of time, Hawking says, well, imagine bouncing a ball. So we bounce a ball on the table now, a tennis ball. So I drop it. And I catch it again. Um, so let's say I drop it and it takes a second to bounce up. So in that second, the Earth has moved about 18 miles or so in space around the sun. So you could ask the question, did that ball return to the same place in space or not? And the answer is, you can't answer it. You, it does from our perspective. But from the perspective of someone watching the Earth go all the way around the sun, it went up by and caught it again. It had moved 18 miles and then from some other perspective, it would have done something else. So the point is, you can't say this is a point in space. It came back to the same place because that just depends on your perspective. It depends on whether you're watching the sun, the earth go around the sun or whatever it is. So so Einstein said that means there's no such thing as absolute space, Ugh. which is, kind of follows if you think about it. But that's a difficult, it's, it's a cool but difficult thought process. Right. I mean, that's that's essentially what's happening when you're on a plane. I mean, if you're throwing a ball up in the air and catching it on the plane, it's happening at a much smaller scale, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're flying at whatever, 600 miles an hour relative yeah. to the ground. But it doesn't but seem like no. it when you're sitting there. Yeah. And Einstein elevated that to a principle and said, if you're moving at, a if you're not accelerating, you're just moving at a constant speed in a plane or now. I mean, that's essentially what we're doing now. We're moving around the sun at effectively constant speed. Then you can't tell. So there's no experiment you can do 
we could look at the decay of a radioactive nucleus or some electricity and magnetism or bounce a ball, have a pendulum, whatever it is. And there's no experiment you can do to tell you whether you're moving or not. Therefore, that concept has no meaning because you can't measure it. And that, well, le that's led Einstein to relativity. Wow. So that, that's the, the basis of general relativity, which is our best theory of the universe. Now, why is it that we think that the known universe is larger than we, we can observe? Well, one point is that it's um, expanding <laughs> and, and we always see the same radiation out there, so the glow of the Big Bang. But there are some deeper reasons. Um, the one uh, from the theory of inflation, the, the 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 best way to explain the universe, the properties that we see, is that it's very much bigger than the piece we can see. So, for example, we measure space to be what's called flat. I don't even have to say what's called flat. It is flat. <laughs> so, if you imagine slices of space, let's imagine slices of them at different times. So, so you just slice the universe and, and say, there's a big sheet. It's like this table. Okay, like a table. There's a sheet of space, and there's another sheet and another sheet. And it can, it can have a geometry, right? It can be flat like a tabletop, or it could be curved uh, like a sphere, or it could be curved in the opposite direction, sort of like a saddle or a bowl. And we can measure that. And when we measure it, we see it's absolutely flat. And that's a very unusual thing for it to be like. Um, it requires, because what, what Einstein's theory says is that the, the shape of space, that the curvature of space is determined by the stuff that's in it. That's, that's basically Einstein's theory of general relativity. Put stuff in space and it curves it and bends it and warps it and stretches it and so on. And what we find is that we, there's precisely the right amount of stuff in the universe to have a completely flat universe. And the, the, the explanation, the most favoured explanation for that is the universe is way bigger than the piece we can see. And so it's like looking at a piece of the Earth. Like if you look at a little one mile square of the Earth, right, then it's, it, it's flat, right? You have to look at big distances, kind of of order the radius of the Earth, or not, you know, bigger, bigger than one kilometre anyway, or one mile, to see that actually you're on a curved surface. And that's one of the ideas about the, the universe and why it appears to be the way that it is because it's way, way bigger. So we just, we're just looking at a little piece, and that's why it looks flat. And that's one of the ideas.